If you're faint of heart, you probably don't want to watch this. Uh, if you got little kids that are under the age of six, you probably don't want to let them watch this. I'm going to describe to you what's going to happen. Chapter 8, Chapter 9, the book of Revelation, we're in the middle of the tribulation. This catastrophe that's going to come on the earth is unlike anything anybody has ever seen. So let me give this as a warning. You don't want to be here when this happens. There's only one way to escape this, and that's to be born again. And that's to be a child of God. That's to be saved by the precious blood of the Lamb. Because Jesus, the Lamb, is about to unleash judgment on the earth, culminating in everything that has gone on since the beginning of time, because justice must be served, or evil will continue for eternity. Jesus, the Lamb, is going to bring about catastrophic tragedies unlike anything or anybody has ever imagined. He does it through a series of three different judgments. Seals, trumpets, and bowls. Why it's described like that, you're going to have to ask the Apostle John someday. But he's on the island of Patmos, and he's writing what he saw past, present, and future. He's already wrote about what was past. He's already wrote about what was present. Now we're into the future. So he's looking ahead, thousands of years ahead, and trying to describe this unimaginable scene in the best way that he can. Okay, let me pick up where we left off. This is, uh, I think, the 23rd message that I have done in the book of Revelation. It's full of symbolism. You have to know how to interpret that or you're going to get lost. Okay? Now, in chapter 8, let me back up a little bit here so you can see the board. In chapter 8, you have the seventh seal open. And the seventh seal contains the seven trumpets. And it's kind of like an unfolding, like a domino. You, you tip one over, it falls, then it tips the next one over, it falls, it takes another. That's how the judgments are coming. Okay, kind of like an accordion. <laughs> okay, boom, 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 boom. They're not all happening at the same time. By the way, while this is going on, there are many other tragic scenes that are going on behind what's happening here with other people. And we'll get to that later in the book of Revelation. And uh, some amazing things are going to happen. In the seven, so, the other seven, so one, two, three, four, five trumpets had already sounded. Let me tell you what happened. I'll bring you up because what has already taken place is nothing about what's going to happen in this next one. In the first trumpet, hail, fire, mixed with blood comes down. And a third of the vegetation is burned up. Now, you've seen hail. I've been in some big hail storms. I've never seen fire come down. I've seen a volcano come up and come back down. But mixed with blood, how'd you like to get caught in that? And bro, isn't that going to help you? And, you know, if you ever had your hands in blood, it's kind of sticky. You know, kind of messy, kind of ugly. And, you know, if you don't like the sight of blood, don't be in the tribulation because that's what's going to happen. It's going to cover everything. Okay. 
after that trumpet, the next one comes down, you have a flaming meteor that's going to go into the sea. And a third of the sea is going to turn to blood. Picture that. A third of the marine life is killed. You've been around lakes and streams and rivers before where fish have, dead fish have floated to the surface and the stench is horrendous. Imagine of all the marine life in the ocean and in the streams are floating up because a third of the marine life is killed. The stench is horrific. But more than that, also, a third of the ships that are in there collapse. Now, in my mind, I'm seeing this big thing go into the ocean and, you know, you know you've heard a tsunami. It's going to just be devastating and got big waves and flooding over. If you're on a cruise ship, which you shouldn't be during that time, or on any kind of ship as a sailor or merchant marines or in the Navy, you're in a really bad place to be. Because you not only have hail and fire and blood, but now you got this massive meteor that has just destroyed everything at least a third of everything in the ocean. And the third trumpet sounds. Now, what didn't get you in this last one, now all of a sudden, a thing called wormwood poisons the rivers and the springs where you get water from. And anybody who drinks it gets poison. Problem is you can't distinguish it. It's sort of like carbon monoxide. You can't really smell it. You just get the symptoms of it. But once it gets in, you're gone. You're dead. Okay. Now, people, I have people where I'm going to build this, and I'm going to build this uh, 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 shelter, and I'm going to store it with water and all. Listen, when this happens, it's going to contaminate everything. You cannot adequately prepare to go through the tribulation and hope to survive. Now, some will. Those that have the, the seal of God on their forehead and their hearts that have put their trust in Christ, they will survive. But many believers that become believers during the tribulations are going to be killed. Many of them. We already talked about uh, all the martyrs that had uh, died and they were up before God and they're saying, God, God, when are you going to avenge us? And God is telling them, hold on, hold on. By the way, Biden and Pelosi, <laughs> Schumer, all these wicked leaders, uh, Putin, and all these wicked leaders that, let's say the rapture was to happen today, they'd enter into tribulation and they would go through all these judgments that they think is stupid and that is never going to happen. Okay, they think they're in control. They're not. God is in control. He's sovereign. Okay, and if you read in the Psalms, he says he's sitting there and he's laughing at all these kings and princesses and uh, presidents and dictators thinking they got everything under control and they don't. God is laughing at them. He says, your day is coming. Your day is coming. Fourth trumpet. If that isn't bad enough, imagine where you can't see now. The sun, the moon, all the stars, a third of them are darkened. So for a period of time in a 24-hour day, you can see a third of it, you're just in complete dark. And you don't know which, th which time that's going to be. Hail, blood, fire, poison water. Let me, let me ask you something in your imagination. What do you think people are doing right now in the cities? They're panicking. They're running all over the place. They're looking for a place to hide. What do you think all the livestock and animals are doing? They don't know what's going on. Never seen, nobody's ever seen anything like this. Okay, everything is chaotic. Confusion is rampant. 
If you have a family in your during that time or babies, my goodness, I can't even imagine the pain and agony mothers and fathers go through, let alone grandparents, to see their loved ones killed like this and die and feel helpless to do anything about it. And so what's going to happen? You've got the Antichrist comes on and says, hey, look to me. I can solve all your problems. And people are going to worship him and bow down to him. And then he's going to turn around and kill them. He's going to betray them. It's going to be the highest act of treachery. Okay? There's actually an island in Papua New Guinea where they practice treachery. Treachery is to make friend with your enemy. And when he totally lets down his guard, to kill him and eat him. There's a book by Don Richardson that's out. It's called Peace Child. And he talks about this as a missionary in Papua New Guinea and also Lords of the Earth. Well, this type of treachery by the Antichrist is going to far exceed this. By the way, I met Don Richardson, crazy, amazing man. I have friends of mine right now in Papua New Guinea. Well, they got to deal with a lot of this superstition and religious, uh, chaotic, uh, cultural type practices. Okay, now what happens after those first four judgments, it, it, for the most part it happens on thanks. Then there's a pause in heaven, just silence. Okay, and an eagle appears. And he says this, whoa, 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 whoa. Three loud woes. You, know, you ever hear somebody say, whoa? I mean, how many different ways can you say whoa? You know, if you're an actor, an actress, whoa. Or, I mean, now, some of you see it, something, un whoa, imaginable. Everybody hears these woes. And each woe brings another judgment. So there's this pause. And because it's woes, it's something even more intense. So if you saw in the last woe, which is the fifth trumpet, Satan himself is falling like lightning to the abyss. And he has a key, a symbol of authority, to open up this abyss where millions of demonic beings are being held. They look like locusts, John describes, but they're much worse than that. And they have the power within them and given the authority to torture people for five months, yet those people, even the ones that want to commit suicide, cannot die. Now, I let my imagination go with that a little bit. So I'm thinking, I got these ugly creatures on me while I'm trying to sleep, stinging me, and the pain is horrendous, and I want to die. What's keeping me from killing myself? They had to stay with you. The minute you pick up a knife or you try to drink poison, boom, they sting you again. You try to pull a gun, they sting you again. They're not letting you die. But they do have the power to torture you. Now imagine watching that happening to your children, to your spouse, to your loved ones, to your good friends. This is going to happen. As sure as I'm sitting here, as sure as I'm pinching myself, this is reality. It's not this woke, fake, imaginative reality. When you read the scripture, God has given us revelation. Re revelation means to reveal, to disclose. He's given it to us as a warning so that we don't have to go through this. He said he would keep us from this time, not take us through this time. It's a warning. No different than when uh, Noah was building the ark. And all the people, look at stupid Noah. He's over there building a ship. We don't even see water. They didn't even know what, what, what that was like. Rain hadn't fallen until that time. And Noah's a hundred years suffering their ridicule until the day the rain began. And then these people are running to the ark, banging on it to try to get in. It's too late. 
it's too late. For many of you listening to this right now, there's no doubt in my mind, if the rapture was to occur, you would go through the tribulation and die. Or suffer tremendous torture or be killed by the Antichrist. Okay. That was the first woe. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Wait till you hear the second woe. Okay. Let me let me let me read some of this to you from the scripture. Chapter nine. Verse 12, the first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. And we still got to get to the bold judgments. The sixth angel blew his trumpet and I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said that a sixth angel who had the trumpet release the four angels who are born at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who have been kept ready for this very hour, day and month and year will release to kill a third of mankind. So a third of mankind that was still alive. They had authority to kill. The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. And John says, I heard their number. 200. There were four dynamic angels that were released on the sixth trumpet, which is the second woe. A third of humanity is killed. If you read further, and I'll show you that, it's, that the reason we know they're demons is because of fire, smoke, and sulfur that proceeded from them, which is symbolic of hell. At the current time, there are 8 billion people on earth. Let's say at the rapture, a million throughout the world is raptured. A million Christians are taken up. Okay. I'm just guessing. It may not even be that number. Or it may be more. We don't know. Okay. Over a million have already been martyred or killed. That leaves 6 Billion, I'm sorry, this should be one billion. This leaves six billion left on earth. A third of them are killed. Okay, which you can figure out. There's not a lot. That's a lot of people. Now, how are they killed? I mean, in verse, uh, in verse 12, the horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breathplace were fiery, red, dark, blue, and yellow as sulfur. Again, symbolic of hell. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions. And out of the mouths came fire. And some people say, well, these were actual people like the Chinese and Russia. No, but then, then John would describe them as people. But he's not. He's symbolically describing them as demons that have come out of the pits of hell. And he said, the head of the horses, remember the head of lions, and out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouth. The power of the horses was in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes. Picture that. Having heads with which they inflict injury. So the previous judgment, you had all these demons come and laying on you and inflicting pain, but they were only allowed to torture you. These demons are allowed to kill you, a third of mankind. The rest of mankind that was not killed by these plagues, and listen to this, did not repent of the works of their hand. They did not stop worshiping demons, idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see, hear, or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. Wow. 
bad time. You know, you got all this, you know, these people that are running around now, these lesbian, gays, transgenders. You have Major League Baseball teams now, basketball, Hollywood, politicians scared of them. I have no fear of them whatsoever. You know, they're scared of well, I'm going to lose my job. Let me tell you something. This is so stupid. God says, he who honors me, I will honor. You shouldn't be afraid of anybody, especially wicked, evil people. Because these people are going to get judged someday by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lord Jesus says to you shouldn't even talk about the things that these people do in private, but rather expose them. But you certainly don't appease them and go along with them. If you're governor, if you're senate, if you're a politician, if you're a mayor, if you're a school board, if you, you need to pull out from there. And then you need to stand up to their face. I will. Okay? And they probably come up to me. I'll just tell them. You know? Now, of course, Jesus loves them, right? So what are you going to do? You're not trying to get them to change. They can't. They don't have the power. They're acting according to their own sin nature. But you can share the gospel and say, listen, this is not what God says in his word. It's an honorable and holy thing to do. You transgenders, if you want some identity, what you need to do is discover your God. When you discover your God, you'll find out that you were made in his image. And the more you get to know him, the more you come to understand yourself. Then you don't need to pretend to be something else. And I say that to you young people, you parents, you grandparents, people in general. You need to get to know God. Go to the Psalms. Come to find out his attributes. Come to find out that he's a personal God. Let me tell you something. When he does that, you don't need to try to change these people. Christ will come in them, give them a new heart, give them a new nature, and give them a desire to long for the pure milk of the word of God and be transformed and be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. This is what this country, this world needs. Is it going to happen? As I'm reading the scripture and as I read Revelation, no. Some will, but as a whole, no. It will not. But you can reach individuals and groups and pockets of people. The next woe is going to be really bad. We're not done with the judgments. And like I said, as this is going on, there's some other judgments going on behind the scenes. And we'll get to that in the next couple of chapters. You need to be ready. Oh, man, this is stupid. I'm going golfing or I'm going to go play tennis or I'm going to go shopping and I'm going to do this. This isn't going to happen now. Yeah, you keep thinking that. And when you least expect it, boom, it's going to happen. Just like on the day, you know, of Noah. God bless you. Hang in there. Be strong. Be mighty before the Lord. Honor him. God bless you all.